Today I want to share with you five tips for how to make hummus that's perfectly creamy every time and better than store-bought. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I think you're going to really love this hummus and you're never going to buy it again because this is so much better than anything that's store-bought. Now the main ingredient that you're going to need are chickpeas. You may also know them as garbanzo beans or what my Italian mother calls them, chichi. Now when it comes to the chickpeas, you have two options. You can use dried chickpeas that you've cooked or you can use canned chickpeas. Now you're gonna need a total of about a cup and a half of chickpeas. And if you're using canned chickpeas, that would be one 15 ounce can. If you're using dried chickpeas, keep in mind that one cup of dried chickpeas is going to cook up to about three cups of cooked chickpeas. Chickpeas are a little different than some other beans, which may just yield two cups cooked if you start with one cup dried, but chickpeas really swell. So if you are cooking one dried cup, you will probably end up with three cups, which is going to be more, or three cups cooked, which is gonna be more than what you need for this recipe. But don't worry, because if you have extra, you can double this recipe. We're going to make enough to serve four as an appetizer. But say you're having a party with more people and you want to make enough to serve eight, then you would use those three cups of cooked chickpeas. But if you're going to follow this recipe and just make this to serve four as an appetizer and you have those extra chickpeas, don't worry about it because they can be used in so many ways. They're wonderful for topping on salads. You can even toss them with a little olive oil and vinegar and some oregano and they make a wonderful side dish. Now, yes, you could definitely start with less chickpeas, but I wouldn't recommend trying to be so exact because if you're starting with just half a cup and you're going through the process of soaking and cooking them, you might as well just make more. Now, if you decide to start with dried chickpeas, I have a video where I show you how to cook beans in general. It's sort of an all-purpose video that shows you how to go through the soaking and cooking process. And I'll be sure to link to that video if you want to watch that if you're new to cooking beans. But I'll just share with you a little tip from that video. Uh, you don't want to soak your beans or cook them with any baking soda. That is something that many of us had done for years, but scientists have now told us that adding baking soda actually leaches the nutrients out of beans. So you may want to leave that out if that's something that you had done in the past. And if you want to take an extra step to make the beans exceptionally, in this case the chickpeas, exceptionally digestible, you can not only soak them, but you can soak them and sprout them before you cook them. And that helps really make the beans very digestible. And I have a video where I show you how to soak and sprout beans. It's very easy to do, and I'll definitely link to that. Now tip number one that I want to share with you has to do with cooking the chickpeas and cooking them whether you're starting with dried chickpeas or canned chickpeas and I'll explain. If you're starting with dried chickpeas, whatever the normal cooking time is to cook them until they're ready to use and be eaten, you want to actually add an extra 20 minutes of cooking time so that they're really soft. And if you're using canned chickpeas, you wanna rinse them well, and then you wanna put them in fresh water, and then you wanna bring them up to a boil, turn the water down to a simmer, and simmer them for 20 minutes until they also are very soft. Then once you get your chickpeas all cooked, whether they're dried or canned, the next step that you wanna do is remove the skins. That's tip number two. Now, you may be saying, oh my gosh, removing skins off of all of these chickpeas, that's kind of a job. But I'm gonna share with you a little trick. What you're gonna do is after all the cooking is done, you're going to put your chickpeas into some water and then you're just going to toss them around a little and what you're gonna find is that the skins are gonna start floating to the top. And then you can just begin to remove them. It's very easy to do. 
Removing these skins is really going to make all the difference in terms of getting your hummus to be really creamy and smooth the same way you often will see with the store-bought hummus. And the, between this and the extra cooking time are the two tips that are really important. Now that all the skins are removed, I've strained these chickpeas and I want to go over the rest of the ingredients that we're going to need. But two things I want to mention. Number one, you don't need to worry about writing any of this down. In the description below, there'll be a link that'll take you over to the recipe. And also in the description below, I'll have the timestamps for each of the tips that we're going to go through and the steps we're going to go through for making the hummus. So in addition to the chickpeas, you're going to need a quarter cup of tahini. And basically all tahini is, is ground sesame seeds. And you can even make this homemade if you want, if you happen to have sesame seeds on hand. And what works really well to do this is maybe one of those little uh, spice grinders or coffee bean grinders. You'll just grind up the sesame seeds and you'll eventually have tahini. Next, you're gonna need two tablespoons of olive oil. And then you're going to want a quarter cup of lemon juice. And this is fresh squeezed lemon juice. I had about two medium lemons uh, that gave me the quarter cup of lemon juice. Then you're gonna want a teaspoon of salt. I've just got a fine ground sea salt here. And then you're gonna want one clove of garlic that you finely chopped. Even though we're gonna be putting everything into the food processor, and we'll talk about the food processor in a minute and whether or not you can use a blender, I do like to put the garlic in very well chopped. That way I'm guaranteed there's not gonna be some little chunk of garlic left in the mixture. Now, can you use a blender to make this? Yes, you can, but it's going to be easiest if you have one of those high-speed blenders. If you have a regular blender, you may have to stop it quite a bit and scrape down the sides to get a smooth consistency. But your best bet is using a food processor if you have one. Now before we mix everything up, I just want to take a minute to talk about the tahini because this involves tip number three. A lot of people will ask, can I make hummus without tahini? And technically, yes, you can, but the flavor is going to change quite a bit. And in essence, you don't really have hummus anymore. You have basically a bean dip. So my tip number three is that you definitely add tahini to your ingredients when you're making hummus. Now, in addition to all of this, there actually is one more ingredient that you're going to need. And that's two to three tablespoons of water or ice cubes. Now, ice cubes might sound funny, and I thought it sounded funny the first time I read it in a recipe as well. But I was actually looking for another recipe, not hummus. I was looking for something that I remembered my uncle, who was from Lebanon, he was Lebanese, he used to sprinkle on top of hummus. Well, in any event, while I was searching for that topping recipe, which I am gonna share with you today, and we're gonna to top this hummus with it, it's delicious. But while I was searching for that recipe, I kept also seeing hummus recipes. And one that I came across was talking about using ice cubes in their hummus recipe rather than water. And I just thought this was so clever. But what this food blogger explained, and I'll be sure to link to the food blog uh, uh, so you can see their exact recipe uh, in the comments and in the description below. But it, the reason was they had learned this from their grandmother and it said that that really helped to add to the creaminess and the smoothness of the hummus as well. Because while the ice was breaking up, it was breaking up everything else. So that's basically tip number four. Instead of water, try ice cubes and see if that gets you a really creamy hummus. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Alrighty, well let's get to making this hummus. Now what we're gonna do is just add in everything together. So we've got our chickpeas in there and then I'm just gonna work my way down and down the line of ingredients here and get everything into our food processor. This is the tahini. And if you've never had tahini, this is delicious. It makes a wonderful uh, spread on so many things, not just in hummus. And then we'll go ahead and add in our olive oil. 
You don't have to worry about drizzling any of this as the food processor is going. This is going to work out just fine. Then we're going to go put in our fresh lemon juice and our salt. Ah, that sea salt. I like the Celtic gray sea salt. It's a little on the damp side, it tends to stick. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and we'll get our garlic in. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just add in two ice cubes. That's it. We'll see how that works. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put this lid on and we'll turn this on. And now I want to share with you tip number five. This needs to blend for at least five minutes. You really want to get this smooth and well blended to be a deliciously creamy hummus. So let's get this started. Well, I've whirled this for two and a half minutes and I'm just going to stop at this point and I'm going to scrape down the sides. This way we make sure that everything gets perfectly blended in and is nice and smooth. This is also a great time to taste your hummus to see if you need to adjust any seasoning, maybe a little more lemon juice or a little more salt, whatever the case may be. Mmm. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go another two and a half minutes. Alrighty, well, that's been a total of five minutes now. So let's get this off of the machine and I will show you the consistency that you're going to be looking for. This is perfect. Now, don't worry if you feel your hummus looks a little loose. Don't try to rush to thicken it. Put it in the refrigerator for an hour before serving it, and I think it's going to be just fine. In the event that you found that maybe you added too much water or too many ice cubes or whatever the case may be, and it does seem very thin to you, it's easy to thicken. You can add a little Greek yogurt that just will give it a little bit of a mild tang, but it will help thicken it a little bit. That's something that I've seen a lot of home cooks recommend. But if you follow this and just start with the two ice cubes or two tablespoons of water, I think you're going to be fine and you're not going to have a problem with it being too thin. Now I'm just going to transfer this out to a serving plate and I'll show you how to put a little swirl in the top and then we'll move on to talking about the topping. Now, once you get your hummus into your serving plate, you can take a teaspoon and what we're going to do is go around and make a nice little swirl that makes a little indentation that allows us some space to add a little extra olive oil on top. Now, the easiest way to make one of these cute swirls is to just take your teaspoon and just put it down at the edge and then just start to spin your plate and just work in towards the center little by little just keep going around and around until you get into the center and then pull your spoon up. Now I'm going to go ahead and chill this in the refrigerator and when we bring it out of the refrigerator we'll put the olive oil and the topping that we're going to make right now. I just wanted to show you up close how smooth this hummus is. You'll see there's no little chunks nothing, just completely smooth. And that really is because of three of the main tips, three of those five tips that are so important. Making sure you cook, your chickpeas are cooked really well, removing the skins, and then letting your food processor go for at least five minutes. Well, as I shared with you earlier, my uncle was Lebanese. He's since passed away, God rest his soul, but he was Lebanese. And we would always get together on Sundays and have a big family dinner. Well, he loved to grocery shop and he loved to cook and he would often make hummus. And he would top the hummus with this wonderful mixture that was so tasty. But this is so many years ago when I was a child and I couldn't remember what it was. But I did remember one thing. I remembered that it involved pistachios because my job was to sit at the kitchen table and shell the pistachios because back then you couldn't buy all of these beautiful pre-shelled nuts. So I went on the internet and I looked for hummus topping with pistachios and used different combinations of words and whatnot. 
and I found something that looked like what my uncle would make. Now, those of you who have been with me for a while know I'm the queen of mispronunciation, so if I mispronounce this, thank you for putting it uh, spelled out for me phonetically in the comments. But I believe that it's called Dukkha, D-U-K-K-A-H. Well, I found this specific recipe on a food blog called The Mediterranean Dish. And it's just filled with all sorts of Mediterranean recipes. And I really like it. And I've been trying along with my husband to eat more Mediterranean dishes. So this was perfect. And the gal who has this food blog called The Mediterranean Dish also has a YouTube channel where she shows making various Mediterranean dishes. So I'll be sure to link to that below. Well, what this topping involves is taking a mixture of nuts, seeds, and spices and chopping them all up and then using this to top the hummus, which we'll do. Now, I'm going to do all of this in a food processor just to make it quick, but my uncle used to just do this by hand with a knife, so if you don't have a food processor, don't worry about it. You can make this by hand. And in researching this, I've since learned that this is not just for topping hummus. This can be served in a bowl along with another bowl of olive oil and then some nice bread. And you can dip your bread in the olive oil and then dip it in this mixture and have something that's wonderful, I would imagine wonderfully tasty. It's kind of another Mediterranean take on when you have olive oil and garlic and herbs that you'll dip your bread in, you know, in Italian restaurants. This is sort of a, uh, I believe, a more Middle Eastern take on that. So what I've got here is a mixture of hazelnuts, almonds, pistachios, and sesame seeds. Now the recipe called for toasting the hazelnuts and the almonds, and I did that and I just you know, toasted them very gently in a little frying pan on the stove. And then I, it, the recipe calls for toasting the sesame seeds, and I did that, the same process, just putting it in the frying pan, uh, just like I did the nuts, until the sesame seeds started turning a little bit uh, golden. And now it didn't call for doing anything to the pistachios, so I've just got them there on the plate as is. Then the spices that this recipe calls for, and I want to mention that this dukkha, if I'm saying this correctly, has many variations. I really think it's one of these things that probably every family uh, has some uh, way of making this topping. And so definitely research this uh, on the internet and then you can see the different combinations uh, that people share. Uh, I specifically went with this because it did have the pistachios in it and so it reminded me of the topping from my childhood. But in any event, then the spices that I've got over here is I've got some fennel seeds, I've got some cumin, some coriander, and uh, some cayenne pepper. And I'll definitely include this recipe along with the hummus recipe on my website. And I'll also link to the Mediterranean dish so you can see exactly how she does this as well. Now, the only other thing you need is just a generous pinch of salt. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop all of this. Sorry, it's a little loud. I'm gonna go ahead and drop all of this into the food processor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get all these spices in. Oh, I think this is going to be wonderful. Boy, when you toast those nuts, it just sounds great. And if you just heard a little bark, that's my sweet little puppy. We have a new puppy. And then she just calls for a general, generous <laughs> pinch of salt. Alrighty, now the key to all of this is not over mixing it because we don't want to make like a nut butter or something like that. We just want to do a coarse chop. So I'm just going to pulse this. Well, I probably just pulse that maybe 10 times total because the recipe says that you don't want everything chopped super fine. You do still want there to be some texture where you're actually seeing the nuts. And so I think that this, I'll show you a close-up picture, but I think this is good because we've got kind of a nice texture to it. 
Boy, this smells so good. I'm so happy that we made this. Now, I took my hummus out of the fridge. It's nice and chilled. And now we'll take the olive oil and we'll just pour some olive oil on top that can go all in these wonderful crevices. And now for this wonderful topping, which I think is just going to kick everything up a notch. Well, I've got some pita bread here and we'll give this a taste and see how it is. You could also use some cut up veggies, which I think would be wonderful. Alrighty, let's go in and give this a taste. Gee, it looks so pretty. I almost feel bad to mess it up a little, but let's see how this came. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. And I love this topping. I really hope that you'll make it with the topping as well. Well, if you'd like to learn how to make more things homemade that are better than store-bought, be sure to click on this video over here where I show you how to make homemade salad dressings, homemade cottage cheese, homemade bread, homemade seasoning blends, all sorts of things. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.